12 points to master corneal tomography. Part 3 Understanding corneal refraction. This topic will be discussed in terms of how laser works, ablation depth and K reading calculation, corneal manifest refraction, and corneal power maps and their applications. In this part, part 3, I will discuss the first two topics, how laser works and how to calculate ablation depth and K-reading. And in part 4, the other two topics will be discussed. Starting with how laser works. We will discuss this topic in terms of corneal astigmatism, principle of laser correction, and ablation profiles. Starting with corneal astigmatism. In the normal cornea, the vertical meridian is steeper than the horizontal meridian, and that's because the vertical diameter of the cornea is shorter than the horizontal one. And this causes a kind of astigmatism called with the rule astigmatism, because the rule says that the vertical meridian is steeper than the horizontal meridian. In order to understand corneal astigmatism, I'm going to discuss two simple cases of wither rule astigmatism. The first one is minus two cylinder at 180, and the other one is plus two cylinder at 90. In the first example, which is minus two cylinder at 180, the vertical meridian is steep, while the horizontal meridian is plano. And the difference between these two meridians reflects the minus 2 cylinder at 180. Now, this is with the rule astigmatism. Why? Because the vertical meridian is steeper than the horizontal one. In addition, the vertical meridian forms an image that is in front of the retina, while the horizontal meridian forms an image that is on the retina. This is why we need a cylinder which is concave or minus or divergent lens and this lens should be oriented horizontally so the axis of the lens will be horizontal 180 in order to give the power on the vertical meridian and the power will be negative because it is a strong meridian and it forms an image that is in front of the uh, retina and we want to weaken this meridian and push the uh, the uh, image towards the retina so this is why we orient this lens on the flat axis because we want its effect on the steep axis so when you will see the prescription of minus 2 at 180 this means that the flat axis is 180 because the minus 2 concave cylinder is oriented at 180 to give its effect on the vertical meridian. In the other example, the patient has plus 2 cylinder at 90. This means that the vertical meridian is plano and the horizontal one is flat. So the horizontal is flatter than the vertical. And the, the difference between these two meridians reflects the plus 2 cylinder at 90. In other words, we can say that the vertical meridian forms an image that is on the retina, while the horizontal one forms an image that is behind the retina. And this is why we need a plus cylinder lens, which is convex or convergent lens. And this lens should be oriented, in this case, on the steep meridian in order to give its effect on the flat meridian, which is the horizontal meridian. Because the horizontal meridian is the weak meridian, and we want to strengthen it by this strong, or plus, or convergent, or convex lens. This is why, when you see a prescription of plus, the axis of that plus cylinder 
is the steep axis. It means that we, we need to orient this plus cylinder on the steep axis in order to give its effect on the flat axis. So, to correct corneal astigmatism, we need to use a minus cylinder lens on the flat axis or to use a plus cylinder lens on the steep axis. Principle of laser correction. Apart from the normal cornea, the abnormal corneas in terms of refractive errors can be either steep corneas, flat corneas, or corneas with astigmatism. In myopic ablation, we ablate the center of the cornea in order to flatten the center and to push it inwards. On the other hand, in hypropic ablation, we ablate the mid-periphery of the cornea in order to steepen the center of the cornea and push it outwards. And in astigmatic ablation, we either ablate the steep meridian in order to push it inwards and flatten it, and this is the same principle of the concave lens, or we ablate the mid-periphery of the flat meridian in order to steepen it and push it outwards. And this is the same principle of using the plus cylinder. Theoretically, we use the central ablation for myopia, the peripheral ablation for hyperopia, central ablation on the steep astigmatic axis in astigmatism, or peripheral ablation on the flat astigmatic axis. And by this, we come to ablation profiles. The ablation profile that is used in myopic correction is the central profile. The ablation profile that is used in hyperopic correction is the peripheral profile. And the ablation profile that is used in astigmatic correction is the plus equation profile. Let us start with simple myopic correction. A patient has minus two diopters. This is the 2D and 3D views of this profile. As you see, the maximum ablation depth is central and it's almost 30 microns for the minus two diopters. This is simple hyperopic correction. A patient has plus three diopters. As you see, there is no central ablation. The central ablation depth is zero microns, and all the ablation is at the periphery or mid-periphery of the cornea. Uh, and uh, as you see in this example, for the plus three diopters, the ablation depth is 50 microns. This is simple myopic astigmatism. A patient has minus three diopters at 180. As shown in this figure, the central ablation depth is almost 46 microns, while the peripheral on the horizontal axis is almost 49 microns. So at the mid periphery on the horizontal axis, it is more than the central part. But the very strange thing here is we are ablating the horizontal axis. The horizontal axis is the flat axis because it is minus 3 at 180. So 180 is the flat axis. So why we are ablating the flat axis? Theoretically, we should ablate the vertical axis. So let us see the reason. Back to this illustration, the patient has minus three diopters at 180, which is with the rule astigmatism. The vertical axis is the steep one, and the horizontal axis is the flat one. So theoretically, we have to ablate the vertical meridian in order to push it inwards. However, this is not done. The computer actually converts the equation into the plus equation. So the minus 3 at 180 becomes minus 3 sphere 
plus 3 cylinder at 90 which is a combination between two profiles the minus 3 sphere profile and the plus 3 cylinder at 90 profile in other words the computer ablates minus 3 sphere and then ablates plus 3 cylinder at 90 since it is plus 3 at 90 the computer will ablate the horizontal meridian because it is the flat meridian in order to steepen it and therefore to produce the final profile which is minus 3 at 180 simple hyperopic astigmatism a patient has plus 3 cylinder at 90 since the case is in plus equation the case is a straightforward as you see the central ablation is zero while the maximum ablation is at mid periphery of the horizontal meridian which is the flat meridian in order to steepen it compound myopic astigmatism a patient has minus 3 sphere minus 3 cylinder at 180 the maximum ablation depth is central but again we have an oval ablation which is horizontally oriented on the flat axis and this is because the computer converts this equation into the plus equation which is minus 6 sphere plus 3 cylinder at 90 which consists of two profiles the minus 6 sphere profile plus the plus 3 cylinder at 90 profile in other words the computer in this case will ablate minus 6 sphere and then plus 3 cylinder at 90 which is of course at mid periphery of the flat axis which is at 180 in order to produce the final profile for minus 3 sphere minus 3 cylinder at 180 compound hyperopic astigmatism a patient has plus 3 sphere plus 3 cylinder at 90 now this case is straightforward there is no re no need to convert it because it is already in plus equation so as you see in the central part uh, of the ablation profile uh, there is zero ablation depth while at periphery we have two ablation depths one is the maximum on the horizontal axis in order to steepen this horizontal this flat axis and it is almost 110 microns and one on the steep axis which is 60 microns now the one on the steep axis will correct the plus 3 sphere while the one on the horizontal is an addition to the sphere to correct the cylinder so the computer uses two profiles one is for plus 3 sphere and the other one is for plus 3 cylinder at 90 in other words we can say that the computer will ablate peripheral part of the cornea to correct plus 3 and then it adds the astigmatic correction for plus 3 at 90 in order to produce the final profile which is plus 3 sphere plus 3 cylinder at 90 mixed astigmatism a patient has minus 1 sphere plus 3 cylinder at 90 now this equation is in plus look at the profile the ablation depth is almost 15 microns in order to correct the minus 1 sphere while the 
ablation depth, maximum ablation depth is almost 50 microns at mid periphery of the flat axis in order to steepen it and correct the plus three cylinder at 90. So the computer in this case is combining two profiles, minus one sphere and plus three cylinder at 90. In other words, it ablates first the minus one sphere and then it ablates the plus three cylinder at 90 in order to produce the final profile which is minus one sphere plus three cylinder at 90. So we can say that the central ablation profile is used for myopia, the peripheral ablation profile is used for hyperopia, and the plus equation profile is used for all types of astigmatism. Now, this is very important to remember because we will depend on these rules when we calculate the ablation depth and post-op K readings in the following topic. Ablation depth and K reading calculation. We will discuss this topic in terms of myopia, hyperopia, and astigmatism. Very roughly, we can say that for each one diopter of myopic correction, the laser will ablate 13 microns when the optical zone is 6 millimeters, 15 microns when the optical zone is 6.5 millimeters, and 17 microns when the optical zone is 7 millimeters. So it is easy to memorize 6, 6.5, and 7, 13, 15, and 17. Let's take an example a case of minus 3 diopters sphere with an optical zone of 7 millimeters. So the ablation depth will be roughly 5, 51 microns. In hyperopia, we have to remember that the central ablation depth is always zero, whatever the optical zone is. So, whatever we have, hyperopia, whatever we have, an optical zone, always the central depth is zero. For astigmatism, we have to use the plus equation, and then we apply the rules on sphere. Example number one. A case of minus three cylinder at 180. We have to convert it into the plus equation. So it will be minus three sphere plus three cylinder at 90. And for an optical zone of 6.5 millimeters, the central ablation depth will be three multiplied by 15 equals 45 microns. Example number two. Minus two sphere minus two cylinder at 180. The plus equation is minus four sphere plus two cylinder at 90. And for an optical zone of 6.5 millimeters, the central ablation depth will be four multiplied by 15 equals 60 microns. Example number three, plus three cylinder at 90. And the plus equation will be zero sphere plus three cylinder at 90. And for an optical zone of seven millimeter, the central ablation depth will be zero. Example number four, plus one sphere plus three cylinder at 90. The plus equation is just the same, plus one sphere plus three cylinder at 90. And therefore, the central ablation depth will be zero because we are treating hyperopic sphere. Example number five. This is a case of mixed astigmatism. Plus one sphere minus three cylinder at 180. First, we have to convert it into a plus equation. Minus two sphere plus three cylinder at 90. Then we apply on the sphere. In this case, I'm going to use an optical zone of seven millimeters. So the central ablation depth will be two multiplied by 17 microns equals 34 microns. Coming to K reading calculation. 
The first rule is in myopia, both Ks will be reduced by minus 0.8 diopters per minus 1 diopter of correction. In hyperopia, both Ks will be increased by plus 1.2 diopters per plus 1 diopter of correction. And in astigmatism, first, we have to use the plus equation. Second, we have to apply the plus on flat K. And third, we apply the minus on both Ks, as will follow. This is a case of myopia. A patient has minus three diopters sphere. His pre-op K readings or SIMKs are 43 diopters for K1, 45 diopters for K2. The correction will be applied on both Ks. The amount of deduction will be minus 3 multiplied by 0 0.8 equals minus 2.4. So the post-op SIMKs will be 40.6 diopters for K1 and 42.6 diopters for K2. In hyperopia, both Ks will be increased by plus 1.2 diopters per plus 1 diopter of correction. The patient has plus 2 diopters, so the increase in Ks will be plus 2 multiplied by 1.2 equals 2.4. We will add this value to both SIMKs, preoperative SIMKs, and the post-op SIMKs will be 47.4 for K1 and 48.4 for K2. Now we come to astigmatism. A patient has minus 2 sphere minus 3 cylinder at 180. The first step is to use the plus equation. So we have to convert it to be minus 5 sphere plus 3 cylinder at 90. Then we apply the plus on flat K, only flat K. Flat K is sim K1. So the plus correction will increase flat K by plus 3.6 as shown in the table, and it will be 44 plus 3.6 equals 47.6. On the other hand, K2 is not affected by this plus correction, and it remains 46. Step number three, apply the minus on both Ks. So, correction minus 5 diopters will reduce both Ks by minus 4 diopters as shown in the table and the post-op sim k1 will be 43.6 and sim k2 will be 42 diopters this is another example of mixed astigmatism plus one sphere minus three cylinder at 90. the first step is to use the plus equation therefore it will become minus two sphere plus 3 cylinder at 180. Step number 2 apply the plus on flat K. So the flat sim K1 will be 43.6 diopters. Step number 3 apply the minus on both Ks. Minus 2 sphere will be will change the K reading by 0. 8 multiplied by 2 equals minus 1.6 diopters and both Ks will be reduced and the post-op sim Ks will be 42 for K1 and 39.4 for K2. This is another example. A case of simple myopic astigmatism minus 3 at 40. The first step is to use the plus equation, so it will be minus 3 sphere plus 3 cylinder at 130. Step number 2, apply the plus on flat K, 
So SIM K1 is the only K that will be affected by the plus correction by almost plus 3.6 diopters and it will be 47.6 while SIM K2 remains as it is. Step number three, apply the minus on both Ks and both Ks will be reduced by almost minus 2.4 diopters and therefore SIM K1 will be 45.2 and SIM K2 will be 44.6 diopters as shown in the table. By this we come to the end of part three and in part four we are going to talk about corneal manifest refraction and corneal maps and their applications. Thank you very much.